Calls to the Scottish SPCA's Animal Helpline are on the increase. In this series of Animal 999, the charity is taking us behind the scenes to show how Scotland's abused and neglected pets, livestock and wildlife are saved from harm and danger. Coming up... Ah, Playhouse. Bob Ward's worried about the health of this hedgehog. There's a lot of flies flying around him. You can get them straight along the Frisk Cross, eh, and let them have a little look. And Connie O'Neill has her hands full with a poorly pigeon. Oh dear, do 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 do. Nairn is a town in the Highlands about 16 miles from Inverness. Despite being small, Nairn still has its fair share of cases for the Scottish SPCA to deal with. Senior Inspector Andy Brown's next job is a kitten that sounds distressed and appears to be home alone. Obviously you're seeing the cat, it's pretty stressed looking up there, certainly very vocal. So I'll just chat in a couple of doors next door, see if we can find anything out. Uh, if we can find out where the owners might just be working. Or maybe they've been away all, all weekend, I don't know. We'll see if we can find out. Sometimes inspectors have to play detective. Try in here. Andy will knock a few doors to see if anyone can shed some light on why the kitten appears to have been abandoned. Finally, Sorry. Andy's perseverance pays off. Just about finding out about your neighbour. Um, I recall the cat's been abandoned. She's maybe meant to work down the town. One of the lasses that, uh, that stays in the properly. So we'll run down and see if we can make inquiries. You can get a contact number um, and find out there's meant to be kids about too that are not about either. So um, there's been seen no movement all weekend. Inspector Andy puts some tape over the door. It means when he comes back, he'll know if anyone's been in to look after the kitten. He'll need to do the same at the back door. And that's when he discovers it's not just the kitten that might have been deserted. Just notice a rabbit in the, in the garage here, right at the window, which isn't ideal. There's a small water drinker there. There's water in that one at the back. And the dishes there, you can't see. There is a little food, although not very much uh, on that. Uh, it's needing a good clean out as well, but it does got shelter. It's no ideal if that's in the window with the sun going round too. Um, obviously concerns about that. And if we do catch up, I'll advise them to get a shift away from the window because of you know, the sun going through the, the glass into it. There is shelter for the rabbit, uh, so, although not very, not very big. The animals must be seen to as quickly as possible, so Inspector Andy will have to trace their owner in near. It's always helpful to have someone around when the Scottish SPCA arrives to deal with an injured animal. People can give vital information about the creature's health, about where and when it was found, and whether or not its condition is getting worse. But it's not always possible to be at home, so leaving a note is the next best thing. Ah, playhouse. Animal Rescue Officer Bob Ward doesn't have to look very far to find his latest patient. It's a hedgehog, which on first inspection looks quite healthy. What I'm doing here is I'm just testing just to see if he's dehydrated, which means when the skin, when you pull the skin, it, it you know, doesn't go back very fast. That's how you can tell if it's hydrated or dehydrated. This one seems pretty solid. There's a lot of flies flying around him. I don't know if that's just because of the fact that he's, he's got faeces inside the box or what that is, but we'll get him out. We'll, if we can get him unrolled, we'll get a little bit of a better check and we can get him straight along the Frisk Cross eh, and let them have a little look and see what they think. The hedgehog doesn't seem to be dehydrated and that's a good sign. But Bob's seen plenty of hogs like this and there could still be something else going on that's brought this normally nocturnal animal out in the daytime. He seems to be reacting properly, which is great. I think he's one that's just been a bit, maybe a bit hungry and he just came out during the day. He seems a bit skinny, a bit skinny for a, an elderly hedgehog. Yeah, we'll get along to Fish Cross and we can play it from there, yeah. Fish Cross is the charity's wildlife rescue centre. Bob used to work there and knows the staff and their vet well. The hog will get the best possible treatment and we'll check in later to see how he's doing.
Rabbits are becoming more and more popular to keep as pets. But they're not as easy to manage as people think. Senior Inspector Nicky Scott's been called to investigate claims these guys are not being looked after properly. But there's no one at home. I don't think the same thing. Nicky will leave a calling card asking the owner to get in touch as soon as possible. But now she's here, she might as well try to see the rabbits. They're in a large pen which includes plenty of space for them to run about, as well as a number of hutches. But Nicky's not convinced they're in the best condition. I can see three rabbits just now. Conditions look like good for them, but I'm a wee bit concerned that this there's two long-haired ones here that look quite matted. Rabbits need to get their teeth checked regularly as well because their teeth can grow and cause a lot of problems. That one's got a lot of faeces stuck around its bum. And that can cause fly strike, especially in this sort of weather when you get flies and then they lay their eggs and maggots and things can hatch and it can cause problems. So it's really important, especially with the long-haired ones, to cut away the hair and make sure it's clean. And if there is anything stuck to it, clean it away. As a rabbit owner, they should be getting their nails cut regularly, they should be getting their teeth checked regularly because their teeth continue to grow and also make, make it aware that their back ends could get fly strike. Nikki's not sure if she's seen all of the animals and she's finding it hard to get hold of the rabbits. Oh, its ears are really badly matted. So she'll definitely be back to have a word with the owner. What we've got is a retired lady who has four rabbits. Where they are could actually be really, really good, but it's needed a few wee tweaks and things. It's better than what a lot of rabbits have got. Clean bedding and things in the hutches, and she's got the reflector things for the heat and things. So everything she's got is good. But maybe just need to brush up a wee bit on the actual care of the rabbits themselves. Nikki photographs the bunnies in the event she has to take the matter further and charge the owner with neglect. When a wood pigeon is grounded with flies buzzing around it, you know it's in big trouble. And with greedy crows perched expectantly on neighbouring roofs, the future for this little fella looks bleak. Hello. Hi. An anxious pensioner in Linlithgow has called out the Scottish SPCA, and animal rescue officer Connie O'Neill has arrived to assess the situation. Right, I'll grab a hold of this one first to stop the flies going on it anymore. And, oh dear, 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 dear. yes. Uh... I think it was, you know, the seagulls, magpies and crows, and you only see them when they've got young. Get. As I say, it was getting about, that was out there. Yeah. It was at the back of the hut when I phoned. Uh-huh. You know, right. so it's been walking about. Oh yeah, yes. it'll be able to walk about. Aye. Yeah, until until the maggots take over, it'll walk about and walk about all day. Yeah. It's just it's been attacked. Other birds would have eaten that. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> These flies are looking to lay their eggs because it's dead flesh there. Aye. That's actually skull. There's no skin on that at all either. That's his skull. They've taken all the flesh off it. It's going to have to be so put to sleep. Put down. Yeah. Yes. Pigeons are soft birds, so they don't tend to attack it. You know, they're not a fighting bird at all. They do their best, I suppose. You don't like to see it happen. Other wood pigeons in the area will learn over time that because of the number of crows, this is not a safe place for them. It's another example of how cruel nature can be. In Nairn, Senior Inspector Andy Brown's hot on the trail of a woman who appears to have left her kitten and rabbit alone at home for a couple of days. Sorry, have you got a wee minute? Uh -huh. I'm looking to get in touch with an Ashley. I've got a call with a cat being stuck in the house. Would you have a contact number for our mobile? Do you mind, can you pass you? Is that OK? Yeah, I've managed to get a contact number for her. She's not in today. Um, I can confirm that she's been away camping at the weekend. So, go back to the van, make a phone call, see if I can get in touch with them. It's not always easy to get hold of an owner during the day. The animals will have to sit it out until Andy tracks her down. Still to come, 
The kitten's owner is upset by Inspector Andy's visit. A bit of shock when I came back. I'm still shaking him. Oh. And it's not looking good for our little hedgehog. There's a really ginormous mess here in the abdomen. Senior Inspector Andy Brown is waiting to hear back from the owner of a kitten and a rabbit that are alleged to have been abandoned. He's got one more job he hopes to squeeze in before returning to Nairn. And it's another cat case. Well, actually, there's a big bunch of cats and kittens a concerned caller reckons are a few too many for the owners to care for. You've got, what do you say, nine adult cats. Are they all long-haired? Yeah. Are they all... I'm just no, one short, one, one is. But most are all, yeah, like, so you've got nine, are, yeah. nine adult. Yeah. And two kittens. Yeah. And what age are the kittens? Uh, I think eight weeks. Eight weeks? Yeah. And they're getting rehomed? Yeah, they are, yeah. You've got homes for them? Yeah. Right. The cats I saw, they were in good condition. And the generally long-haired cats, you know, there's no sign of any mats or dirt which generally says they're, they're being well fed and well looked after, they're not stressed at all. They get access outside, they had a litter tray in, in below the stair there, so generally I don't think there's been much in that at all. It's a speedy conclusion to the job and Andy's soon back on the road to Nairn. Hi, I'm just got a hedgehog here that Bob brought in. The hedgehog that arrived at Fishcross earlier is about to be examined by vet Romaine Pitsy. I think it might need some anaesthesia, yes. Hogs are nocturnal creatures, so although there are no obvious injuries, there has to be a reason it was found outside during the day. Oh, you are very flat, aren't you? It's not really going to cooperate too much. It's fair enough. It's not really fighting me or rolling up very vigorously. That's what we'd normally expect from a hedgehog, is they'd sort of snort, they have a warning sort of a pfft, and they'll raise the spines just above their head. They'll quite forcefully roll themselves into a ball. He's doing everything in a very sort of subdued manner. Um, and it could be if a hedgehog's cold in winter, they will roll up, everything will slow down because they hibernate. Um, but obviously hedgehogs that are very ill or badly injured have lost a lot of blood. Um, and similar sort of things, they, they may be very weak. Romaine will have to give the hog some anaesthetic so he can take a closer look. You can find really pretty horrendous injuries that we just can't tell, broken jaws or no teeth in the mouth. So this is the only way of really having a good pants on exam. Stuart, I'll get you to hold this for me if you don't mind. I'll just get a cotton bud for when he's enrolled. We can look in his mouth and check everything else. So we always look in the mouth because it's very difficult to examine this unless they're anaesthetized. You can see these teeth are really dark and dirty in appearance, but they're actually normal because hedgehogs eat such a variety of things in their diet and a lot of insects and the chitin from the insect's exoskeleton stains the teeth. Um, so the colour's fine, although it looks abnormal compared to our teeth, um, and these teeth are quite stable, so the teeth are not a problem. That's good news. The hedgehog's teeth are as vet Romaine expected, and it doesn't have any injuries to its legs or body. But then Romaine makes a dreadful discovery. There's a really ginormous mass here in the abdomen, and it's lobulated, a bit like a, a bunch of grapes. Mm -hmm. You can feel the intestine just along one side. Okay. These are always an abscess in the lymph nodes in the intestine, and they're very common in hedgehogs. You and I have seen Yeah. And the reason that these guys get found out in the day with this is because they are dying. So we can't treat them. We've tried yeah. for the last couple of years and we don't do anything except prolong their misery. So I'm going to put him down because okay. he's not going to recover. The abscess is so huge, the hedgehog won't be able to survive. Regrettably, there's only one course of action available to Romaine, and that's to put the wee guy to sleep. Back in Faithfully near Clydebank, the owner of five rabbits who all need some TLC is having a return visit by Senior Inspector Nicky Scott. 
The two biggest concerns I had was one of them's got quite bits matted in its ears. Yes, that's because that's when it's been running about the whole district for a fortnight. All right, okay. And, got back the other night. and the other one had faeces in its back end. Again, yeah. Um, and obviously, you'll know yourself in this kind of weather, fly straight, bang yes. on. I've got to trap them, which means I can only get them of an evening because they won't go in. Right. They go in when I put the pellets in. Right, and then you um, just shut it up. I can and usually manage to catch one. Right. <laughs> because I have to block, because it's in what, one, two, three, three, four sections, and I have to block one the section off completely, and hopefully the one I want to catch is in. OK. Which they don't always do. Rabbits can be escapologists, so it's important to cover any holes they dig with mesh. They were escaping, which is fair enough, they were and that they had no food or no water, and they were dirty, which one of them actually is. I blocked in the holes and I just have to catch them and groom them. And there's another potential problem. Nikki needs to know if the rabbits have been vaccinated against myxomatosis, a disease that in the 1950s wiped out 95% of Britain's wild rabbit population. Have they been vaccinated? No. Nope. I was told that um, you could be when I got them uh -huh. that it, you, you don't vaccinate them that small. Right. As someone who's kept rabbits for many what, years. What I would say, you vaccinate them for myxomatosis, which is mm -hmm. rife just now. Is you it? you may have been lucky in, in that they haven't come across a rabbit well, this, with myxomatosis. This is the first but, time they've been out in about three years because that was when I laid all the mesh underneath. OK. And that is obviously now rotted away. If they were mine, I would certainly get them vaccinated for myxomatosis mm -hmm. because there is a high chance with them being outside rabbits and with them getting about that they could mm -hmm. get that. Make sure that their back ends are clipped with them being hairy rabbits. Mm -hmm. And you can get in the pet shops, um, I noticed that the uh, spray I've for fly strike. Two sorts, one's for the hutch, uh -huh. which the, the hutch gets sprayed, I think it's every three months it is. Uh -huh. And I've got the one for them as well. Perfect. Okay, okay, that's fine. Owner Virginia seems to know what she's doing with the rabbits. They became matted because they escaped and she'll groom them as quickly as she can. But Inspector Nicky will do a follow-up check to make sure the bunnies have had their vaccinations and been cleaned up and sprayed to stop fly strike. Rabbits are great fun, but they can be quite difficult to look after. So like all pets, think carefully before you take them on. Senior Inspector Andy Brown's back in Nairn. The owner of a kitten and rabbit apparently abandoned for the weekend has replied to his telephone message to get in touch. That's a return to the card I left the door from Ashley um, and her phone number to say, and obviously she's back at the property, so I think I'll just head round a wee word. Was this a kitten in question? Puddin. What's the kitten called? Puddin. Puddin? Is it your kitten? Right, um, I see, actually, we had a report that, um, that the, nobody was looking after the kitten. It was yowling up at the window there. It was very vocal, and you can see why somebody's called in. Yeah, along this morning, I've made a couple of calls. I've only had him a few weeks, I actually got him with my brother. Right. And this is actually the first weekend we actually left him. No, right. Right. But my yeah, brother in law, he's been coming in at night to change his little tray and to right. give some food. And... Aye. And where was it? Was it in a, a, was it a bedroom he was...? It was in uh, my bedroom window. Right, yeah. I'll take some details for you. I'll lend you your brother-in-law's contact details as we were with him just to... Mm -hmm. Unless I don't believe you, but I've got to follow these things up. If Ashley's brother-in-law confirms he fed the kitten while the family was away, then she's in the clear about that. But there are still questions about the rabbit. Do you clean your rabbit out, then? Yeah. I think your rabbit needs a clean-out. The rabbit is a bit dirty, and if you yeah. maybe take it away from the window, yeah. just so the sun doesn't pull it out. It goes in there at night. All oh, right. It's usually be husband cool. outside. Cool. And, and, and what other animals have you got? <laughs> Come a kitty. Big softy. A big softy. Still He's puppies, lovely so. as well. Well behaved. Oh, They're usually quite hyper, you know. The family also owns a Japanese Akita, but he seems to get on great with the kitten and the kids. It does appear to be a misunderstanding prompted by a call from someone who'd seen the kitten in the window and assumed the worst. I look after my animals and my kids. Obviously, the rabbit needs a big bit of clean-out. And my brother-in-law's been looking after them. I'm going to put dog or cats in that in danger. 
and I've had the chance to take him with me. I would have, but <laughs> he's too wee, and I can't even be safe at home, so a bit of shock when I came back. I'm still shaking him. <laughs> oh, shocked. It turned out Ashley had nothing to worry about. That's fine. Brilliant stuff. That's Inspector good. Andy got in touch with her brother-in-law, who confirmed he'd been feeding the cat over the weekend. When the issues with the rabbit are sorted out, then this will be a case well and truly closed. 